Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new video. Today we are going to look at Fedora Kinoit. Kinoit is the KDE version of Fedora Silverblue. So a few months ago I did a video about Fedora Silverblue. Silverblue is the RPM 3 version of Fedora which is giving you atomic updates and the possibility to roll back to previous images if something went wrong in your current image and also the possibility to test things in containers in the terminal. So without too much talking let's jump into Fedora Kinoit. So a few months ago I did a video about Fedora Silverblue, if you remember, if not I will put a link in the video description so that you can watch that as well. Silverblue is basically a version of Fedora based on the RPM 3 project. Now as I said in that video, the RPM 3 project is a hybrid image package system. It basically combines libo3 as a base image format and then accepts RPM on both the client and server side sharing also code with the DNF project. Now we're going to look a little bit more in depth afterwards about the OS3 project, but just to summarize it, it basically is an operating system in an image. So it is immutable, that means it less prone to crash. Its purpose also is to be more stable. Now Silverblue is actually the Fedora version with the RPM OS3 project, which is using the GNOME desktop environment and Kinoit is the version which is using KDE. So this is the website for Fedora Kinoit and I will leave a link to it of course in the video description below. You have here a presentation of the project. Here it tells you basically it's built on top of Fedora. It's using in this case the Plasma desktop, the KDE desktop. This is actually something many people asked for with Fedora Silverblue having a KDE version. And as in Silverblue as well, the applications, most of the applications are actually flat packs. So they are basically running independent from your operating system, reducing the risk of crashing it. But if there is an application which is not available on Flatpak, you can actually layer in into the system image that application as a RPM package. That is actually one of the advantages here with the RPM OS3 is the possibility to layer in the image other packages if you don't have Flatpaks available. So that means basically once it's layered in the image, it basically becomes part of the image of the OS. So going down here, you can see also the RPM OS3 project. This is also something that I will show you a little bit later. I will leave also a link to it in the video description below. And one of the big advantages, of course, of Silverblue and also Kinoid is that you have Podman available as a container engine. So I will show you this afterwards on the desktop, but what it basically does here, you have the possibility in Kinoid and Silverblue to create in your terminal containers, if you are, for example, working on several different projects and you want to have them compartmentized in different containers, you can use Podman to do that and it will not touch your base OS. Now we have also here some informations about Silverblue and also Fedora Core OS. Now on the top here, we have also the download button where you can download your version of Fedora Kinoit. Now make sure you understand here, this is actually a pre-release version. It's a beta version. I think Fedora Kinoit, it's gonna follow the release of Fedora 35, which should be in about two weeks. So just be aware that this is actually a beta version, so it might have still some bugs. So right now you have a version for x86-64 and ARM processors. We will have also later, it seems to be a PPC-64 version to download. We have also here a get involved section. If you want to get involved in the project, you can follow the informations here. And also last but not least, the documentation, which is very important. It offers some good information about Kinoid and also the RPM OS3 project. So I definitely recommend you to check this out. Now, moving forward here, I just want to show you, this is the Silverblue website where you can download also Fedora Silverblue. This is using the GNOME desktop environment. It basically contains the same RPM OS3 project, but as I said before, with Fedora GNOME. Now, moving forward here, we have also the website for the RPM OS3. So you can see here again, RPM OS3 is a hybrid image package system. This is what I told you before. And you can see here in the graphic what it does. It basically combines these two projects. So we have the possibility to use RPMs and also using the lib 3 project combined in the RPM OS3. So you can basically use the OS3 project, the lib 3 project, and also if you want layer in RPM packages. 
Now, as I said also in the Silverbrew video, the features of the RPM OS3 are many. We have transactional background images based and we have also OS rollbacks. So basically every time you're going to layer in a new thing in the image, I'm not talking about flat packs here, I'm talking about RPMs. You're basically creating a snapshot of the previous image. And if you have a problem with the new image, you can always roll back to the previous one. So you have also here a why section, which I definitely recommend you to read through. And we have also some other things here, why you want to use it. And of course, as it says also here, one major feature RPM OS3 has over traditional package management is atomic upgrade rollback. So as I said, again, especially if you are developing stuff, if you are a developer and you want to test many things, this is a good thing to have because if something goes wrong with your current system, you can always roll back to your previous one. But as a normal user, this might be also great because you don't want to mess up your system and you can install packages with flat packs. That means you're not going to touch basically your base OS. And if you do layer in some RPM packages into your image, you can always roll back to the previous system if your current image has some issues. Now, the last thing I would like to show you again here is the Wikipedia because Kinoid is actually the name of a mineral. As you can see here, Kinoid is a light blue silicate mineral. You can see it here in this photo. It's a beautiful mineral. Again, silver blue was again another mineral. This is the naming of choice for these distributions. They are following minerals name. And you can see this is actually the Kinoid mineral. I will leave also a link to this article in the video description if you are curious about this mineral as well. Anyway, let's jump into Fedora Kinoid here. And you can see it's already installed. The installation is actually nothing special. It's the basic Anaconda installer that you will find also in the normal installation of Fedora. So that's why I'm not going to show it in the video here. But the system is not locked, so we can unlock it here by entering our password as we would do in KDE. And here we have the KDE desktop environment. So let's just explore this very quickly. The installation of Fedora Kinoid here, the KDE desktop environment offers very basic packages. You can see here under administration, we have just the firewall, which is installed by default. For development, we have here just one application, the DBus debugger. As an internet browser, we have only Firefox here. We have also our settings, of course, the system settings. And we have here also some system utilities, like for example, the file manager Dolphin, the console, and also some other utilities here. So that's actually pretty much there is to it here for the installation. We have a very basic installation here. So let's go ahead and open up now our settings. And let's have a look also at the version of KDE. So let's scroll down here and go to system information. You can see here we are using KDE Plasma version 5.22.4. The KDE framework is 5.85.0 and the Qt version is 5.15.2. Now, interesting here is that actually it's using Wayland by default. Now, I've tested this right now only on a virtual machine, but I will test this also on a laptop. And I want to test this on a laptop because I want to see actually how Wayland now on KDE performs on multiple monitors. I had in the past also a 4K monitor with a 1080p display on the laptop and Wayland was not yet working really well on KDE that time, but now maybe it's improving. So I have to test this out in GNOME. It's working really well out of the box in KDE. When I tried it last time was not yet working well out of the box. So I'm going to test this out surely later again to check if something changed. Now let's close this window and open up our console here. And here we have the typical console for KDE. Let me actually go full screen here and increase the font size so that you can see better. So again, this is RPM OS3. So that means basically we cannot use by default the DNF or the YUM package manager. If you try to type in, in here sudo DNF update, for example, you will not be able to do anything. You will need to authenticate, of course, because I'm using sudo. But you can see here DNF, it's command not found. Same thing is going to be for YUM. So let's type in YUM here you can see yum command not found. Well, actually RPM OS3 is updating automatically once you reboot the machine. And once the update is installed, it's gonna prompt you that if you wanna use the new image, you will have to reboot your machine. If you want to actually update manually, you can do so with the RPM OS3 update command and then hit enter and you will basically check for updates for your image. Now, I typically don't do this because Kinoit or Silverblue are doing actually this automatically when I boot the machine, but I just wanted to show you here the process. Anyway, I don't need to do this right now, so I'm just gonna hit Control-C to stop the process here. 
and clean up the terminal with Control L. And of course, one of the big advantages here is also you can install RPM packages if you don't have basically a flat pack available. So for example, in this installation of Kinoit, I don't have many things installed. I don't have many packages installed, but I can install this as a flat pack. Now, the thing is that before you can use flat packs, we need to define the repository. Now, I'm not sure this is going to be again the same when the final version will be released. Probably by then the repository will be already included, but right now it is not. So let's open up here Firefox. So you can see also how it's done if you want to do this. And let's go, let's type in basically flat pack and then Fedora. And let's here just click the first link, which is the one we need. And we can basically copy this line here with Control C. Let's go back to the terminal and hit Control Shift V to paste that in and hit enter. It's going to take a moment here. We need to authenticate. And there you go. So now if we want to install Kden Live, for example, we can type in Flatpak install Kden Live and hit enter. And you can see it found it in the remote in the Flatpak system. So we can just hit Y here and accept the defaults and then accept the defaults one more time to accept the installation. And now it's going to download my flat pack. It's going to take maybe like 20 seconds to do this or 30 seconds, depending of course, also on your internet connection. So it seems to be that it's almost done. And I think the installation is now complete. So we should have now Caden Live installed. If not, we just need to log out once from the machine. But I saw that it was updating the applications. And you can see Caden Live is there. The icon is not showing because I probably need to log out once, but that's fine right now. So I can exit from here. So for example, let's say we want to install another editor. Now I know Vim is also available as a flat pack, but as an example here, I'm just going to show you how you can basically layer it in into your image. To do this, you can type in rpm os 3 and then install and then Vim, very simply. So once you hit enter here, you're basically going to layer in this RPM into your base OS image. And that means basically once it's installed, you need to reboot your machine in order for Vim to be available in your base OS. Now, this is one way to do it, of course. Again, I would recommend you to install flat packs in Fedora, Silverblue and Kinoid just to avoid layering in unnecessary packages unless you really have to. Now, this is going to take also a little longer because the installation, as you see, needs to also be writing the OS3 commit. It's basically working with a Git process. Now it's staging the deployment and very soon the package will be layered in. And you can see there at the end, it says changes queued for the next boot. You can just type in systemctl reboot here to start a reboot. And you will be having the choice basically to see the two snapshots, the new one with Vim and the old one without it. So this is one of the big advantages with RPM OS3, the possibility to roll back to a previous snapshot. Now, the next interesting thing here in Fedora Kinoit, like in Fedora Silverblue, is the possibility to use the toolbox. Now, the toolbox is not installed by default. So when you type in toolbox, for example, create, we want to create a toolbox here for working with DNF. Let's say this is just an example. You can see here image required to create toolbox container. So we need to download this first. So let's type in Y here. And it's going to take a moment here, of course, depending also on the speed of your internet connection. And now it's creating already the container because the image was downloaded. So now to enter the container, we need to type in, as it says there, toolbox, enter, and then DNF and hit enter. So you can see you are in a container now because you have this small icon on the left side of the terminal. Now we are here in a DNF container. Now, because we are in a DNF container, it doesn't mean that we can only use DNF. But basically, we can use the system as we would use it in Fedora 35, the standard installation. So let me clean up the terminal here with Control L again. And let's try to install a package. So let's type in sudo dnf install. So let's try to install in this container Vim, for example, because it's not installed by default. So let's hit enter and install it. This is going to take a moment. It's not a big package. And so let's clean up the terminal and look for a file here. So let's type in Vim. And let's open up here, for example, our bashrc file. Why not? So dot bashrc and hit enter. And you can see we have here our Vim editor and we can work with it. Now, what happens here? Let's get out of the Vim editor here and let's get out of the container by hitting control D, for example. And let's try this again. Let's type in here vim dot bash 
rc because we have also here the bash rc file but you can see vim command not found now we layered in vim here into the base image before but we haven't rebooted the machine yet so that's why we don't have it yet available also in our base os but this is just to show you how the container is basically working. You're basically working in a container, in one container, everything what you do in there is basically isolated from the rest of the system. So you can test whatever you like, you can try out things, but you are not basically messing up or you are not actually damaging your base OS. So this is one of the big advantages here in Fedora Kinoit, as is the same also for Fedora Silverblue. Now, this is a very small example, but you can imagine what you can do here. You can basically test the things in your containers. Also, by the way, we can list the containers here. We have also the toolbox list command, which is going to show you the containers that we have right now. You can see it's running and the container name is DNF. We can also remove this container by typing in toolbox rm-f and DNF for the name of the container. And it's basically going to remove the container if we type in again toolbox list you can see we have still the toolbox image that we use to create toolboxes we can also remove this if you want by typing in toolbox rmi for removing image and then the image name and then hit enter it's going to take a moment to remove that and now if we type in toolbox list you will see basically we have a nothing so we can create again a toolbox toolbox create let's call it for example dev and hit enter you can see again we need to download first the image for the toolbox because otherwise we cannot create it so if you want to create more toolbox definitely don't delete the toolbox image otherwise you will need to download it every time so i'm just going to type in n here i don't need to do this right now i just wanted to show you how it's done so this is Fedora Kinoit, the KDE version. Now, whether you want to test out Fedora Silverblue or Kinoit, the only difference here is going to be the desktop environment because the base OS is the same for both. Like it's the same also for other distributions of Fedora. So if you like the KDE desktop environment, definitely Fedora Kinoit is worth a try. As I said before, now it's in beta. So you might still find some bugs in here. The final release should come after the release of Fedora 35, which is scheduled in about two weeks. So this was Fedora 35 Kinoid Beta. If you like the KDE desktop environment and you like the possibility to have atomic updates, definitely give Fedora Kinoid a try. It's still in beta, as I said, but it should be available after the release of Fedora 35, which should be approximately in two weeks. Now, if you try this out, let me know in the comments below. I will try to answer you as soon as I can. Or if you have any general comments about Fedora Kinoid or Fedora Silverblue, let me also know in the comments below. And I hope you liked the video, guys. I'll see you very soon in the next video. Stay safe and take care.